Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. We are running a little bit late, sorry about that, but we are here to go. I will switch that right away. I did not realize that the category was on that, my bad. Fix that up right up. Fantastic, okay, that is nice and switched. We're ready to go. Everyone is filtering into the lobby now. I've just got to set up the teams a little bit. So yeah, here we are. This is the map pool. Um, sorry, I do have the map we're going to, but I forgot to update it. So we'll be going to Volskaya, Probius Choice. You can see the bands there on the screen. We just set up who is on each team, and then we're ready to go. Should be a fantastic matchup here for us tonight. We lost some. Adding. Alrighty, that is updated. I'm ready to go. Let's see how everybody is feeling here in the chat. Um. So, neither one of these teams have played yet this season. Uh, both were in, I believe, division the same division last season with uh, relatively good results in the middle of the pack. Can come back strong this season and make a statement. Uh, I'm expecting a pretty even game. Should be a damn close between the two. And I'm, I'm really excited to get into this matchup here. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and let everybody know I'm ready to go. Now that we've got everything set up. We've got a ready, and a ready, and here we go, guys. Um, I am omnisciently saying I can't tell you that answer because that would be cheating. Besides, your puny human mind cannot comprehend. We're going to see Anna Rexar, the first bands. rid of that dangerous Anna healing plus her uh, anti-healing which would be just a powerful tool Diablo removed we're taking him out won't be seeing the Lord of Terror terrorizing any backliners today Garrosh banned out in response to the Diablo ban. And we'll be seeing K 
Kael'thas as our first hero from Frizion. Let's see what the response is going to be from Probius. Johanna Jaina. Good for rotations, burst damage, the other kind of count, the big mage you kind of want to get out of the... Make sure it doesn't get banned out pretty good into their team. So far, anyways. Kalthos Jaina matchups pretty even, I'd say, overall. And we're going to see a new Barak Tehran with the Kalthos. Now, that is a powerful opener that we just got. They will definitely be able to get picks nice and early on with two forms of follow up to the new Barak initiation plus burst damage from the Kalthos. Very strong opening for Team Rectum. See Leoric banned out. Just going to remove the pressure that he can apply, especially into late game. Got two pretty viable builds. And just is an overall pretty strong hero. Probably one of the best offlaners that you can get in the game. Covers wave clear. He doesn't lose hard any matchups. Ganking him is hard to do, and even if you do, he's back in lane much sooner than any other uh, offlaner would be. So he kind of counters a bit of the aggressive style that team, some teams like to run. Hanzo removed. Nice pairing with Jaina. You get a bit of long-range poke along with ex you know extra burst damage um, with bouncing arrows off the side, or you can go redemption build with a, a bit more sustained damage from the front line. Um... All good. Anduin Blaze. Now this is starting to turn out pretty nice. They do have a very good dive composition, but Blaze and Anduin do have lots of tools to negate stun lock single target burst damage um, in the form of Bunker, um, and Salvation, of course, the Leap of Faith from Anduin, um, and just his general healing is quite good into that style of play. However, he himself is vulnerable to it, so if they do get any open engages onto Anduin, and we do not have good peel from a uh, Blaze Bunker. It'll be very difficult. And we're going to see um, Kerrigan to Haka taken by Team Rectum. And Cassia is going to round out the draft. So now we've got all of our choices here. See what the swap round brings. If they're going to make me go a little bit crazy by flipping things around. So we got a ton of lockdown CC. Which one, Booga? So let's see what everybody thinks. This is a pretty good draft. Cassie has decent follow-up. She is also vulnerable to dive. Which one, Boga? Sorry guys, just slightly distracted here. I did pop up the thing so you can see the names on each side, but I will rattle them off now 
we have on the left hand side of the map the blue team probius chaos talk tank on the blaze secret asian man on the jaina dragon 478 playing johanna hung hung fu uh on the anduin and sage playing the jaina sorry secret asian man is on the cassia on the red side we have team rectum jesus mafia on the kerrigan tanner playing the tarand nanarosaur on the uh anubrak smell on the haka and Frisgeon on Kael'thas. A little bit of pressure coming in on top of Jesus Mafia. It takes quite a bit of damage, but uh, Toronto manages to keep him alive using that Loon's Choison, a very good level one choice. Um, we have pretty standard talents, Fingers of Frost, Loon's Choison, Tissue Regeneration, uh, Nerubian Armor, and Fury of the Swarm. On the other side, we have Hold Your Ground, Charge Strikes, which is not something you see quite as often on the Cassie builds. But I personally like it. I love that. I think it's great. Yeah, did I get that thing to go up? Eh, whatever. We'll get a second one if it didn't work the first time. Um, and we see a really early camp coming out from Probius. Uh, sort of understanding uh, this map pretty well. Making sure that they... Uh, get those camps nice and early we're gonna see the rotation coming out from team rectum as well onto the camp on their side but an invasion is coming through secret agent man leading the way trying to press in here but they are getting collapsed upon it is actually a 4v3 chaos tank is going to come in to try to keep them alive but nothing else is happening dahaka does a dig to avoid the damage and now he's actually taking a metric ton of damage there are five to four here it looks like team rectum needs to get out now gets a nice burrow over the wall just in time so that he doesn't go down but that is a successful engage Charge um, complete. due to the rotation of five members from uh probius they do miss uh well no they're actually gonna rotate up here just in time to even clear this so nothing really lost in then in invade they get the camp they get the turret and they get the experience in the top lane uh probius really showing why they first picked this map um they they do understand how the early game rotations are are kind of meant to be played and uh i think they've done a very successful job of making sure that they get all the soak that they can nice fast rotations and getting aggressive on the camps is exactly what we want to see from them we're gonna see the siege camp being taken again just about six seconds before the start is gonna get that pushing in a little sooner um and that's gonna give them control of the point so uh, a quicker capture means it might push a little bit farther forward than this one will or, or this one will end up if they if it has the chance to defend on the wall but i think it's close enough that it's not going to matter and i think in the end that's actually a positional advantage as they were able to get onto the shrine much faster get 20 30 percent charged in we see the five minute engagement coming onto the cassia now she's kind of in a bind uh Le leap of faith was not used to peel cassia out and it would think she was going to go down but both turrets being dropped in the middle actually brings down the kerrigan and she goes down as well as kaelthos and that's going to be a two for nothing trade in an area that looked pretty scary for the cassia she manages to get out even without leap of faith to peel her from that situation And here we're going to see the pressure coming in from Probius. It looks like they're just going to siege down this mid wall. All right, guys, just give me two seconds. Good re-engagement, though, by Team Rectum. And they do manage to pick off the Kerrigan in the back. Sorry about that camera work. Um, I'm just trying to sort this thing out for my kid. I think I got it. I think we're good. So the protector got the front wall. Top wall is still very much intact. Oh, 
nothing else happening outside of the kill from Cassia a little bit earlier. We're going to see an engage go on to Dragon 478, but he's going to dodge combo. More like it was misplaced. He just kind of walked forward and avoided it. And without that initial, light, or initial stun and with Iron Skin still up, they just didn't think that it was worth it to put the pressure in. Combo comes in, almost hits Sage, but he does manage to sidestep it. And still, we have a battle level lead advantage here for the side of Probius. Still doing fantastic rotations. They didn't get enough, I would say, out of the first Protector, but um, the Protectors now, I don't think, apply nearly as much pressure in the early game as they may have had before the changes came through. Uh, in fact, it's not just the early game, I think, and just general team fight total, it is reduced in power. Um, and committing two heroes to it does significantly reduce your ability to peel um, and team fight in a lot of situations. Um, it can siege really well, and it is still dangerous to dive under in some situations, but it doesn't really peel out targets without that stun the, quite the same way. Um, it doesn't pick off squishies. It doesn't become a huge threat in the back line. But as it scales up, it does have a lot of health. So it still does become a problem in long sustained fights. But if you're in a composition that is good at sustained fights... Um, that early protector isn't going to do much or if they're very good at diving you um, without any way to peel uh, quite often you're going to lose in the exchange much faster than the other team is going to and that's a uh, this team does have a lot of dive and if their squishies aren't in there it's going to be kind of hard to keep them alive so this is later camp I'd say both these camps on both sides of the map are taken a bit earlier than I would like to see but since this is the objective coming up anyways, all you really need to do with these camps is try to push up the wave in your favor. So this late capture is almost always going to favor the team that does it as the first one is the one that gets cleared due to its safety on this side of the map. But both, <clears throat> and again, due to the timing, uh, are not going to get a whole lot done. We do still see a slight item advantage. The side of Probius. They do have a they do have the Haka. But the big issue with the Haka is he doesn't have exactly a lot of places he can dig in. Like he straight up can only dig into these vents here. And we see Probius doing their best to bait out the rotation. They do check. But because of their positioning, they're still not in a great spot. Engagement going on to Johanna. The light bomb's going to actually lock onto two. He's going to kill Nubarak. Stun out Tenor. But it looks like Sage is taking a ton of pressure from Jesus Mafia. But he does manage to peel out. The bunker goes down to keep um, Blaze alive. And he pops back out. Realizes he doesn't want to be there. And he goes back in. Anduin, though, gets engaged upon by the Kerrigan. Um, but he does go down. They do trade out Kerrigan and Anduin for Blaze and Anubarak, but Anubarak is going to be up much sooner given the fact that he was taken out very early in the, in the fight. So I think we're going to see percentage channel from Team Rectum now. Um, as they are going to have to wait until the other members get up. Now there are still two turrets available on the side of Probius and that does give them an advantage and they have 13s so I mean as soon as the remaining uh, members get here I definitely want to see Probius look for an aggressive engagement as they still have 13 advantage they still have two items they're probably going to want to push in here it is always a little rough as soon as you kind of commit your front line to the engagement though because the Kerrigan is going to go behind but a new just gets absolutely deleted Cassia, though, in a lot of trouble, does drop the uh, turret as he was afraid that he was going to go down to Hawka still on it. And now it's Kerrigan who gets isolated in the middle of the turret doing a lot of work, getting the pick off on it. And that's going to be two for nothing. And it looks like the smell's going to see if he's going to get out, but he gets, he gets stuck in place and dies. <laughs> um, I'm not entirely certain what made him stay there. Uh, it was a, uh, it was an Anduin route. Anduin got the route. He got him stuck there, and that's a dead Dahaka. A pretty good exchange there, guys. I I liked that fight quite a bit. 
But they did exactly what they needed to do. They were aggressive, they got into position, they used their advantage to get a team fight win. The pressure is getting put on them now, though. And those Kael'thas bombs being spread to four members is a is a absolute ton of damage. So we're going to see the engagement now coming back the other way. There are no longer any talent tier advantages. There are no longer an item advantage, although there was a healing camp. Kerrigan does go down. If someone picks up that healing camp and just drops it, it would be a big brain play. Cassia gets cocooned from the bomb. Therefore, it gets negated, but it is Blaze that gets kind of left out on his own. He does get CC'd and dies. And that means Protector is going to go to Team Rectum. This camp, this, this, uh, uh, <laughs> objective was super insane. Like, that was a lot of back and forth. Just each using the uh, advantages of each one had at any given time to to kind of swing the match in their favor. I do think of that uh, healing item and come down a little bit faster from Probius. Uh, that team fight might not have gone as far because they could have placed it a little bit higher, put it on the the blaze, and maybe kept them alive. Um, Bunker, I think, might have been available, too. And the fact that he wasn't able to get that off might also be a major reason for that. That's why you want your Unstoppable and your uh, Bunker generally to be around the exact same timings, if you can. <clears throat> a little bit of Phoenix damage going on to Chaos Tank. He's going to eat it. They do manage to get the bot tower, or the top tower in the well. So, again, the Protector's should be used strategically like this as they generally especially early can't push super hard without a massive advantage so if you don't didn't win like a huge team fight off of earning the rear protector it's kind of hard to just kind of hard push a lane with it and it looks like blessed shields coming out onto the haka he's not the easiest hero to gank and he has managed to pop down he uses his uh, essence we see the Cocoon coming out on Jaina. She's now out of the Cocoon, and Dahaka is still in a pretty terrible position. Drops to below 200 health, but he does manage to survive. Johanna did go down, in fact. And now we're going to see the counter engagement coming out from all of that stun lock. A nice leap of faith. Keeps Cassie alive. And these later game team fights just seem to be turning against... <laughs> my bad. Um, Probius a, a bit more frequently... Um, their engagements, uh, you know, choosing that target onto Dahaka meant that most of their cooldowns were used trying to kill him. And he really isn't the easiest hero to gank. Especially if he's got full essence and his dig up and available. And there's just not enough chain CC on, like, there is, really is only two major forms of crowd control outside of a root. Um, and there's enough space in between that that just one E was enough time for his team to react to the gank. So it looks like we're going to have a bit of a 4v5 skirmish here in the mid lane. The Hawk is still getting lots of extra soak. I suspect the soak numbers are actually quite high. Oh, there's a major engagement happening up here. I did not notice. That's going to be three for nothing. I did manage to catch it in time, but not enough time to properly cast it.
I mean, it should be switched back by now. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I did not realize that happened. So all you really missed was a pickoff in the top lane. My bad. Huge mistake. You'd think this is my first time. We see an engagement. So we, there was three members picked off in the top lane. Um, where they lost the top four. But we still have an 18 to 19 fight here. No level 20 talent here advantage. We're going to see a bit of positional advantage here coming out from Probius. The Haka's still in the top lane. It looks like they're really just going to sit this out and wait for the level 20 advantage. And then they're going to re-engage, which means Probius, instead of waiting here on this, uh, um, on, on this objective, really needs to look for a fight. But they're super spread out on the point and not in any easy position for them to... to really get positioned properly. And that's the thing. 20s is now pretty much popped. They knew what they were doing. They are going for the 20. They were just kind of delaying it. But the problem with the delay is if you're not soaking in that period of time, then all you really did was hand rectum the... And here we are seeing a quick rotation onto this side using the idea that they're split to get an advantage in this fight. But no one was picked off quickly. And that's actually going to turn things around. And that's going to be Jaina going down. Bucker did not come out fast enough. There goes the Ring of Frost. And now we get a pause. And there was an ill-fated uh, attempt on that, and that's going to be a four-man team wipe. Your typical level 20 to level 18 fight. I mean, I liked the idea that they were split. So let's just rotate around on them, get an angle, and see if we can just pick somebody off nice and quickly. Um, but the execution just wasn't there, and uh, it, it took too long for an engagement to happen. Um, onto the appropriate target and so it just kind of flipped around on them as the level 20 engagement came out and all that burst damage just kind of translates into dead heroes Blaze the only one that managed to get out of there So they do manage to get the bot keep. Um, and rotate up to get the mid. So, I mean, plenty of health was still on this thing. They did have level 20s. Um, you could probably argue that they could go for the core. But again, before, like I said, the protector just doesn't have that much uh, in the way of just, like, game-ending potential as it once did. Um, if you get a four-man team white closer to the time where you get the protector, sure as heck, walk right through. But... Um, given the fact that wasn't the case, I mean, you can see right now the amount of damage that they're taking. Just sieging this. Um, definitely a scary prospect, but things are going to get turned around. And that's going to be a three-man four or three-man kill, one-man traded. We see a new Brack is the only thing that goes down, but three members of Probius just get completely deleted by the engagement coming up from uh, everybody, basically, on the side of Team Rectum, and that is probably going to be it. A five-man team wipe. This late in the game, both keeps down. That's going to basically be a 100%. No way can they stop this from being the end of the game. And that's going to be game number one for you folks. Sorry with the technical difficulties and things kind of getting switched around in there. Uh, like you say, you'd think this would be the first time I've ever done this before. But that would be not true.
There's your end of the game statistics. Kalthos definitely with all of that free space to just throw out spells. Um, did the most on those teams. So we'll go to the talent screen so everyone can take a look. Yeah, I think they just engagements and they were using the global really well on the side of Team Rectum, which was giving them a lot of advantages. Anyways, I'm going to put us to a small break while I get us set up for the next screen, just, or next spot. All right, welcome back, folks. Sorry about that. I know I didn't actually go to a regular break, but I've been having a little bit of issue with the background music for my little break time. I'm going to deal with that eventually. Um, however, as we go on, we did get map select by Team Rectum. Oh, sorry. No, Probius. Um... Now, everybody has joined in the lobby. Last game was quite good. We saw um, it was a bit more back and forth, especially up into the second point. But once it got to the third and later half of the game, things started to fall apart a little bit for Probia. So I'm hoping that they um, come in with a plan and they can execute it all the way through each stage of the game. And, uh, and maybe get us an equalizer here.
Okay, I'm just trying to see if, uh... I know we have a lot of dead air. <laughs> um... If we're ready to go here. I think everybody is on the right sides. I think we should be ready to go. Okay, looks like we're getting the readies from everybody. So we'll be starting... All right, let's get the energy level up a little bit for this next one. Get the professionalism up a little bit more into this game as I am just garbage today. We're going to see Anna banned yet again by Team Rectum. And Rexar removed, so we're a bit par for the course at this moment. Diablo, so we're looking at very much the same bands as we had last round. But Kael'thas is the adjustment here. Instead of going for that Garrosh band, we're seeing the Kael'thas removed. And so that Dahaka, so I mean, uh, Volskaya is not ne typically considered a great Dahaka map. It's not terrible, but it doesn't have the best areas for himself to dig into. And it's not a huge map. So, you know, you don't get that consistent split soak where you can constantly pull resources in to deal with you on the other side of the map. Um, but uh, this map definitely does. And uh, having that is very strong. We're going to see Anduin picked up yet again, but uh, we are going to see Anubrak go to the other side. And that might help out a little bit with the initiation problems that they were having in the last, uh, in the last match. Toronto picked up yet again. By Team Rectum, but we're also we're gonna get a Hanzo on Jesus Mafia instead of the Kerrigan from last game. That's a bit of a turn up, but uh, Hanzo does give you vision control, which is just very good in this map. He gives uh, lots of places to bounce his W's off of. This is probably one of my favorite maps to play Hanzo. Um, he's also very good on the boss. Um, I don't know if you really forego his level. Um, or explosive arrow because it's really nice for him to be able to peel off and just like explode with million of minions and then pop back into doing something else um and his regular burn is pretty good generally speaking but you definitely could make arguments for going for the upgrade or the level four w talent that kills mercenaries and bosses and things like that much faster as been taken out uh very good on big maps um especially since he can more reliably stack off of Qs, off of fights over the obje objectives rather than killing waves. And Johanna removed so that they don't have another strong frontliner for the side of Team Rectum who have neglected to take their tank pick at this time. Uh, we do see ETC and Jaina um, picked up yet again. So it's going to be a Nubrak ETC. Gul'dan and Garrosh. Garrosh was still remaining up. Uh, Nubrak's pretty good into Garrosh. So is Jaina. So um, it's a bit of a riskier move, but there really wasn't a whole lot left over. So I'm not surprised by the pick. It can still get plenty of value. If we saw any of the coordination that we saw in game number one, 
it's almost certain that we'll see quite a bit of threat generated from the garage. And Greymane making his debut for Team Probius did get a big buff this last patch that should make him very scary and viable. Uh, might be taking over Rainer's slot more consistently in matches. But there's your teams, guys. So, again, generally pretty good. Uh, I think Gul'dan has definitely gone up in priority of uh, assassins. Um, in, in like mage style assassins as he's less relied on skill shots. Um, he's going to still pretty reliably land his ease onto targets. Um, so let's get this going without any further ado. On the blue side, we have Probius looking for the equalizer, hoping to get back into the series on their map of choice cursed hollow we have dragon 478 on the nubrak secret asian man on the jaina this time sage playing the gray main chaos tank playing the etc and hung or who Hu, Fu on the uh anduin on the other side we have team rectum looking for that domination to start off the season to smell back on the dahaka very impactful in the first game their dinosaur uh, playing Garrosh, who was banned in the last game. Um, Jesus Mafia on the Hanzo. Uh, Frizion on the uh, Gul'dan. And Tenor playing Toronto yet again. So if the follow-up CC is on point, throws can be very deadly in this situation. We already see a two-man split to the bottom lane. With ETC going to the top, we're going to see a dig from Dahaka. Just to make sure he doesn't miss any of that top soak. But the bot rotation is very slow. And they're actually going to lose about four minions. And that's going to be a slight advantage for Probius in this to start the game off. Caps are now available. I'm assuming we're going to see Nubrak split into the middle. Jane is going to hold down a bot against Gul'dan. While Greymane and Anduin go for their siege camp. We do see the spawn here on this side of the map. So I wonder if this siege camp is a little premature. Um, they're probably going to hold this. But uh, there's still a lot of time left on the clock before the, even the, next, uh, the, before the first tribute even spawns. So this is going to be pushing up, and it isn't a Dahaka lane who's just going to be able to flat clear it. So he's not going to be tied up by any lane pressure um, to speak of. You know, getting this early camp here on the side of Team Rectum is perfectly fine as they... Um, it's Getting this out early means it's going to be spawning faster. So we are going to see Greymane and Anduin go right to the Bruiser camp. Um... Again, they can clear this very fast. Greymane clear is, is fantastic. It's pretty much Illidan level. The only reason it's not as good as Illidan is that he doesn't self-heal off of the minions. And Garrosh just safely soaking. Making sure he's in range to get all the experience. Gul'dan is pushing up into Jaina almost because of the kill, but it looks like he actually is unaware of this gank coming in. The stuns go down, and that's going to be a pickoff. Gul'dan goes down in the bot lane. That's going to be first blood. I am just full of mistakes today. Just absolute trash tier casting. I apologize, guys. Just not on my game at all. If I ever had any. So, five-man rotation. Dahak is still up in the top lane. We're going to see the channel coming in from uh, Huing Fu, and there's no engagement coming in from the side of Team Rectum to put the pressure on here quickly enough. 
mid lane's getting pushed in by a camp. The timing on this was a bit better. Um, and it is getting a bit of value here. They clear up the mid lane, pushed onto the wall, got half a turret. It's not great, but it's not bad. Whereas the other one didn't really do anything. It wasn't able to push in freely. But first tribute does go to Probius, and it was on a slightly favored side for Team Rectum. So, well, no, it wasn't. Actually, it was right here. So actually an unlucky spawn. Again, on the opposite side of the map, which is a little bit rough for Team Rectum, as they have to really commit to a fight if they want to get in on this side of the map. Especially since, like, they do have um, ETC down here, so there's not going to be any faster rotation. But I have much bigger issue with this engaging without this than this engaging without this. So, it looks like the timings are still going to work out. Dahaka's going to move right into the mid lane. Gul'dan's going to make the rotation in, but Smartly is not going to move through here. But that, in effect, makes this move very good. And it looks like they're just going to call it off. There is a slight delay coming out from Hanzo, but he can't step up any further. The Owl comes out to try to hit. It does get the stall. Even though it was properly blocked by a teammate, Garrosh just gets impatient and runs right in, saying, hey, I've got to do something here. And uh, the engagement full-on comes in from uh, Team Rectum. And surprisingly, they're doing a really good job. Sage actually gets hit, but it is to smell that's going to go down, and that's going to be Dahaka dropping in that fight. Garrosh also looking to be in a pretty shit position. But he does manage to get out. I was surprised he actually lived through the initial. He just walked right through the middle of the team and took every bit of damage that they had for, available from them at the time. I wonder if a bit more of a stun and focus was actually spent on the Garrosh in that situation. There's no way he walks away. Um, I know he's a tank. I, I appreciate, the, appreciate the kindness, but I am absolutely casting like trash tonight. And uh, I apologize, you guys deserve better. So I'm going to try to fix that up uh, here and now. So going forward, no more mistakes. <laughs> Anyways. We see the camp starting to push down the bot lane. The next tribute is going to be spawning on this side of the map. And honestly, I don't think Propius has to do anything. They really can just stay on their side. Allow this to be channeled. Maybe even use the opportunity for this to be channeled to go for their boss. Um, they would essentially be trading bosses. So big stun coming out onto uh, Nubrak, but of course Unstoppable gets him out. They're actually going to be hard pushing in this mid camp, it looks like. They push up the wave. It's going to get cleared up by the towers immediately. Nubrak still kind of poking his head in here, making it look like there's threat. But they're really not interested. They they definitely uh, feel like getting the other side of the map. Nubrak's still poking in, but it really just doesn't seem like they want anything more than just to go for a delay. You know, but if they can delay long enough, then why not? But with ETC being in the bot lane, like the only re-engagement that they have here is getting level tens and using stage dive, and that's just a scary place to stage dive into. There's nothing safe about it. So we're going to see a DPS rotation to the top lane. They're both going to clear this out. That means both are positioned for this boss. ETC, however, has managed because he was uncontested in this bot lane to actually put a lot of pressure into the bot lane. Complete removal of the front wall. And they are doing exactly what I was expecting them to do. But I feel like they could have been doing during this delay. All they really needed was a new Brack to sit here and harass. They were completely committed to it. They could have totally taken this. And uh, then they wouldn't just be trading bosses, which is essentially what they are doing right now. Um, as it is just going to be a flat trade between the two. Um, Spawn is in favor of Probius, though. As, uh... And we'll see how this kind of goes down. A new Brack gets engaged on... 
We see Curse Bullet go out, but I think it missed. It didn't look like it actually hit anything. Ring of Frost goes down, but uh, Hanzo was cocooned, so it only really landed onto Garrosh. Garrosh does die, though. So that's still a positive exchange. We see the follow-up stun coming from Anubarak onto two. Garrosh dead. There's not really much else they can do. Boss is pushing already all the way up onto the keep due to the work that ETC did in the bot lane. And things are going to get a lot scarier now because it's not taking any damage. So it's just going to punch through this wall. Hans is going to come down here and clear it. And there isn't any major push coming out from... Um, I wonder about this ETC rotation. He does have stage dive. So he should be able to make the rotation. But he, he's 41 seconds out. Now, Nubrak going in without his team is going to cost him his life, but they do manage to get a nice root under the smell. But this is a five-man defense, and three down here in the bottom lane. Stage drive isn't up for 30 seconds. They really need to get out of here. In fact, I don't think it's going to happen. Secret Agent Man taking a ton of pressure. He does manage to get the slows in. Oh, man, that almost killed him. He dropped to less than 250 health. Things got a little bit scary there. But meanwhile, ETC is just split pushing in the top lane. Midfort's going to go down. Yeah, like that boss was just going to clear itself out. ETC didn't really have to split there. He could have come down. Nubrak could have been more patient. And then they could have actually threatened this bottom keep a little bit more um, viciously, I would say. But uh, that's just not how things went down, so... Two forts and a keep front wall. It's a reasonable push, but you know, they still didn't really get enough out of it. Like the the experience is still dead even. In fact, Team Rectum with this camp actually manages to get 13s first. So they they do have a slight advantage once this keep has got its its or this camp is actually received. Um, it will probably even it back out again. So, easy camp clear in the top lane. Mid is going to push up a little bit. Of course, this one's struggling with all of the uh, lane pressure applied. But given the four-man rotation into the mid lane... They actually clear up the opposing camp and are actually going to push in on this mid wall. ETC is still split soaking the other lane and we can see that uh, the advantage from this is that they're getting a lot more split soak. As they had to in the top lane as well. Stage dive does come in so he does somewhat abandon the bot lane soak. He pushed it up against the keep wall with the catapult so this is actually going to press onto this keep. If not cleared out but we're going to see the rotation coming in from team rectum. Probius is just going to keep their lanes pushed up. Now, this top lane being pushed out is interesting. Stage dive can pretty much land anywhere on the map that it wants to, and it's on roughly the same cooldown, if not slightly shorter than a regular dig from Dahaka. If you don't push the lane hard, add, I think it's a new moot point anyways because of the catapults. So slightly favorable spawn. Not really. With the fort gone, it's, there's actually no favored position here. Outside of the vision control here. We do see Garrosh with a very for, very forward spot. But if he gets spotted out, he can get collapsed upon pretty hard. And Garrosh is not going to tank through all of that damage. Like, a Cursed Bullet plus everything else stacked on top of it can really drop him down. Jaina, though, did get into a bit of range. We do see... The ETC come in, but the stage dive was too late to stall out the objective, and now ETC is split. And we actually see Anduin almost get completely ruined by Dahak on the back line. Three-man ring of frost is actually going to get a kill, but um, it's not enough. Uh, Hanzo gets out. They pick off the Anubrak. He was in the cocoon, so he didn't get hit by the ring of frost. 
And it's really only the Greymane that manages to squeak away with his life. And that's going to be another tribute coming up. And it's probably going to be much quicker than this engagement come in. We will see stage dive available. Anduin will be up in time. And Jaina will be just coming up. This bot boss is going to push into the fort. On its own, it's not going to get much more than that, though. But the added advantage of this is it... It's, you know, this lane has been cleared up, so this uh, slight catapult pressure isn't going to be pressing upon them too hard in the lanes. Everyone is up and available. Heroics are yet to come off cooldown. But no one's in position to defend this, and it looks like they're just going to take the curse. Which is a bit of a scary prospect, as boss is still available after this. If they manage to push in this top lane... That opens up a win condition, and boss in the bot lane still hasn't been cleared up. Jin is doing her best to clear it out. Um, I would have put Greymane on that, as he's much better <laughs> at burning bosses. We're going to see the pressure coming in into the top lane. Looks like a 4v4. Not quite yet. Greymane is in the bot lane. They, it's almost like they heard me. <laughs> they swapped out who needed to be there. So Siri and Frost go down, but it doesn't manage to land on anybody. Uh, might have actually hit Garrosh, but he got cleansed out of it, I believe. But the rest of the engagement coming here is actually really rough. Garrosh looks like he's going to get focused down. He does go down, uh, and it looks like now Tanor is in a very terrible spot, and Sage is just going nuts onto the back line. Uh, the support getting split from the rest of the team there was a very scary prospect, and that's going to be a three, a four for nothing team fight for Probius but Probius is losing this bot keep at the moment and that's going to be actually pushed up there for a while there's no way they can rotate down here fast enough we are going to see instead the engagement coming in onto this boss they do have plenty of time to push it in they can use the momentum from the boss to actually push in the second this keep into the uh maybe even into core if they manage to get kills off of it but the defense is going to be resurrected by the time they get there um so it's not a guaranteed victory here like they can open up a win condition but i don't think they can win uh they definitely need to push up the lane quickly jane is going to quickly clear that up and then uh yeah etc just stays down here and clears this out until he gets an op, op a good opportunity to get a stage dive all heroics except for starfall are available And we see the initial pork poke coming out onto the boss. It's already at about two-thirds health. Almost down to half. Um, and that's the thing. Gul'dan uh, Hanzo is pretty good at clearing bosses, especially with the Hunter's Mark. So I don't even know if this is going to keep... Although, if they do get a kill onto Garrosh, follow-up Ring of Frost gets the kill onto Dahaka. The front line is gone. ETC gets a stage drive onto the back line, and this is actually the worst-case scenario for Rectum. And it looks like we actually might see the end of the game coming out. Dragon Arrow coming out does not manage to land on anyone. There goes the Cocoon. This is pretty much going to be it. I don't think that there's any way to stop this push from coming in. Even as soon as Hanzo comes out, he's just going to get stun-chained. There's no way they're going to be able to put on enough pressure to be able to kill this, and this is definitely going to be going down. Protect comes out just for good measure, just to make sure that nobody is actually going to get hit um, or go down before this core is finished. And that is going to be the equalizer coming in from Probius. We have a game three coming up, gentlemen and ladies. What a way to finish that matchup! Fantastic way to see it work. Um, yeah, they got the they they realized that Garrosh has been playing forward all game. They had the opportunity to kill him, and they absolutely executed. They pulled the trigger, and that's what they needed to do. So, those are your end of game stats. Uh, I really think that the gray main got a lot of value. Was able to put all the pressure he needed to in. And that's going to be that. Anyways, we're going to set up the next game.
pop up the talents screen for us very shortly. Okay, folks, we are back. Game number three. We are going for a full series tonight. I think we are all excited to see such a close matchup between these two teams. Uh, Rectum taking the game number one Volskaya in pretty convincing fashion in the late game. Probus, though, making some statements on Cursed and Hollow. They will not go into the night. And they, uh, we are getting game number three. We are getting Team Rectum did choose map pick. We are going to Towers of Doom. So we will see how this all sorts out. Super excited. 
Yeah, I mean, Anubarak has won two out of two games, so I'm wondering if uh, picks or bans need to start going towards that hero a little bit more frequently here, uh, especially between these two teams. And I think the, you know, the higher the skill it tends to go, um, the more frequent this tends to be the case, that allowing a tank like Anubarak to kind of just free juggle between two teams gets to be a pretty scary proposition over time. Sorry, people, we are still just waiting for the rest of each team to start filtering in. And then we'll be a little bit more ready for this game to start up. We have everybody in lobby. So hopefully we're about ready to start this game. Alrighty. On our way, everybody, welcome to game number three between Probus and Team Rectum. We've had a spicy matchup so far. Anubrak really kind of de um, determining the pace of each of the games. Uh, both teams using it very slightly differently each time. Uh, Dahaka uh, got a win on both Sky and a loss on Cursed Hollow, which is... Uh, you know, interesting to see that's the case. Um, Jaina lost in the first game, got a second uh, game win. Um, and kind of the same story for Toronto. So a bit of back and forth, a bit of 50% happening across the board here, except for that new Brack being kind of that big factor. So we're going to see the same bands to start everything off. Anna and Rexar have been removed from the pool. Kalthos being banned yet again. First pick is still going to the side. So it's kind of catch-22. Do you let him have Diablo or do you let him have a Nubrak? And do they even first pick a Nubrak? So instead, they're going to ban the Jaina and kind of say, well, it could be either. You get a Nubrak, we get Diablo, vice versa. That is going to be first pick a Nubrak. We've identified the trend. We know what's been winning the games. So Johanna and Anduin, Anduin was on the other side. He did get a victory. So, very interesting to see that, that is going to be the first rotation. And in response, we're going to get Leoric and Stukov. Very strong opener. Uh, really kind of amplifies the dive. Uh, you know, if you've got uh, Entomb with a, uh, a Silence Pool underneath it, or even Silence Pool follow up to Nubrak initiation, it's pretty tough. Asmin is going to be banned yet again.
Neither Carol Thoughts or Asmodan making it through the vans. Orphea is going to be banned. That was a bit of an adjustment. We definitely haven't seen that one yet come out um, in either picks or bans. So might be a bit of scouting coming in from Probi Probius. I do think these two teams know each other. They played against each other before. So um, it wouldn't be that surprising that we're going to see a few target bans coming out. Just like uh, like we, we happen to see here with Orphea and Kael'thas and Rexar kind of being targeted. And things like Jaina and Asmodan. Ana, obviously, these are these are not just meta bans, but typically things that they don't like to deal with from the enemy team. So Blaze is going to be the offlaner to smell making a change here from his Dahaka, which has been generally pretty good. I don't think his Dahaka has been terrible, um, but we are going to see the change nonetheless. And Genji, the other Shimada, is going to be making an appearance here in game number three. And Gul'dan flipping over to the other side. Just wanting that siege damage, that consistent pressure. And Cassia coming back out again for game number three from game number one's Secret Asian Man. So we are going to get the reset comp. I was wondering if that was going to be the choice. I think we might have seen... It might have been more likely a Gul'dan Genji had it been... Had it remained up. But uh, since that wasn't the case... We instead are going to just get full resets. That's not terribly bad into what they have. Gul'dan and Cassia can be very vulnerable to that. Uh, Anubrak's going to do a pretty good job of getting in the way, and he does have a lot of peeling tools. Um, but even Stukov is very much in threat of the reset cop if it can get through the frontliners. Or if they're out of position or they get good flanking positions. Not as much in the way of initiation, which with a recent copy, kind of want a bit more. Um, I almost would have preferred the uh, Diablo if this was the style of play they were going to go. But we're going to ignore all of that. We're going to get into the game here. I am going to swap the overlay appropriately. And now I'm going to announce our teams. We have Dragon478 back on the Anubrak for game number three. Chaos Tank picking the Leoric. Sage on the Gul'dan. Uh, Huang Fu on the Stukov and uh, Secret Asian Man on the Cassia. And also looking for that win, first win of the season on the opposite side of the map in the red, we have Team Rectum, Jesus Mafia on the Genji, to smell on the uh, Blaze, uh, Nanairosaur on Johanna, Tanner playing Anduin, and Phrygian on the Ming. We're going to see the initial triple stun by Blaze. It's actually put a lot of pressure on the Chaos Tank. He misses the W, and that means he almost dies. He drops to under 300 health, but he does get out of range of anything dangerous at that point. Uh, could have been a pretty scary prospect. Early game resets, not what you want to be given. We see a W going out, trying to slow down the rotation, but it wasn't in any position where they could get into it. Jesus Mafia just goes down right for the soak instead of the delay himself. And we're going to see a quick... Lane clear. Come out from Probus. And here we go. Another kind of engagement. We do have a four-man rotation here. Uh, the wave clear is definitely on the side of Probius, but they might not make the rotation in time. They actually lose one, two, three whole minions in that rotation. It was actually too slow. And so it's slight experience advantage going to be for Team Rectum. So Johanna comes over to be somewhat aggressive and with this composition, you, you tend to want to be. Um, but Ming had been making a top rotation. 
Because they just kind of scout out what was going down. Silence is going to pop onto the minions on each side, and we're going to get a bit of a trade here. Uh, Wave Clear is definitely in favor of Pro um, Probius in this instance, so... Although I didn't realize that Gul'dan wasn't there. He was just clearing out the mid lane. But still, Cassia is more likely going to clear faster than a Genji is going to. Um, but I don't know. And probably evens out when you consider the Johanna. So a lot of pressure going on to Nubrak. He's going to be back. Because he needs to uh, reset his health and mana a bit. And uh, Nairus are not much in better shape. He does have a higher health bar, but he definitely has a pretty damn low mana pool. And that can be a real problem. So he's just going to be back as well. This lane is nice and pushed up, so that's a pretty safe spot for him to do so. You see Blaze posturing up, out of lane, ready to channel this in 13 seconds. Um, I imagine he probably could have come down here and soaked the mid lane. In fact, that's exactly what Leoric's going to do. Although, I would say the timing on it's a little bit off. Yeah, he's going to actually be the slower to getting to this point. And we're going to see Jesus Mafia doing his best to actually get the channel in. Dragon pops up to put the threat on. We see Johanna sitting in the back line. An initiation coming out from Dragon onto the back line. Silence coming down to stall out any counter engagement. But Nubra getting super low. Stukov also getting really low. And it looks like he might get picked off here. He actually drops below 100 health and walks away. Gets his uh, healing out. His ability to actually go back there and tap is actually going to maybe save this fight. Chaos Tank getting a bunch of healing off its a smell. We can see the pressure being put onto Jesus Mafia, who's less than 200 health. The smell is now an island. I'm not entirely certain he's going to walk out of here in time, and that's definitely going to be a kill. First blood, it goes to Probius. W, who was going to hit, but it didn't actually have the range to do so. And that's going to be the bottom channel, so slight shots advantage for Probius. So we can see the pressure being applied into the bot lane. The the superior wave clear is definitely going to help them push up and siege onto this. But of course, camps are still available. They have plenty of time to do that with sevens um, got for both sides as the mid lane is not being soaked by Probius. So it looks like Nanirosaur is going to have half health, but it's going to be fine. Nubrak is going to go posture up on the offensive side and it's actually going to scare off the Li Ming a little bit as he's not entirely certain if there's going to be a rotation and in fact his positioning did warn them so a full rotation comes in to the mid lane from the mid lane and uh, that's probably going to secure it although at this moment considering how low Johanna is and the fact that uh, Phrygian has no mana you could definitely argue a, a re-engagement could be in order here but it looks like Probius is just going to say nah Let's just put the pressure on the wall. Nairosaur's going right onto the back lane, hits uh, three-man W, puts a blind onto the Cassia, but he is still kind of on an island, and the pressure is coming in. He's going to eat a lot of damage, um, but that is more or less what he does. But um, the bigger problem here really is Li Ming having no mana. She's got basically nothing to fight with, um, and that means the sustained fight is definitely in favor of Probius, and the objective is up. So they are going to clear this out slower. I, I think they were playing a little scared. And uh, I'm not entirely certain if it was actually necessary to be so. Um, they will just evenly trade. So they're going to maintain a slight lead due to that. Um, we see a lot of pressure coming onto the, the Johanna. But she is going to use her iron skin and just get out. And meanwhile, top lane and mid lane are pushing in really hard as Leora committed to that. A lot harder than the uh, Blaze did. And uh, he managed to be able to push out a couple more lanes before Leoric could actually react. Uh, generally, this matchup, I, I tend to favor the Leoric as he has a lot more tools to deal with Blaze in lane. Um, if he just kind of walks onto him and just keeps hitting him with his W, uh, Blaze eventually has no choice but to kind of get out. And he can't really sit there and trade with him for too long. Uh, we are going to see the uh, uh, pressure coming in from the bot lane. They are going to be able to take both towers from the bot and maybe even get a little bit of damage onto the keep. They actually do get damage onto the fort. Uh, Cassie is going to get hit by a root. Um, Johanna is way on the back line just trying to push in. 
as heavy as she can, disrupting the back line. It's going to eat a lot of damage, though, and her iron skin is down, so any further initiation up to this point could be very problematic. See, Cassia just getting as much damage in as she possibly can. I'm going to pop up the uh, talents. I haven't actually had these up the whole time. Uh, we do have our level 10s. Um, we have Entomb, Ball Lightning, Cocoon, Horrify, Massive Shove. And meanwhile, we have X-Strike, Disintegrate, Light Bomb, uh, Bunker Drop, and Blessed Shield. Interesting to see that we have uh, Lee Ming going Orb Build. Um, not afraid of dive, so getting that long range poke can be a bit of a problem. Uh, they do still have dive mechanics, though. I mean, uh, Anubarak, uh, Stukov, and uh, Cassia are all very dive heavy. We're going to see the counter dive coming in. Fear going on to Jesus Mafia, but the follow up Blessed Shield is enough to disrupt things to get the kills onto both. And, uh,. I would say overall that team fight heavily in favor of Team Rectum. They were just able to get that initiation. Anubrak was kind of caught with his pants down. The rest of his team clumped up right behind him. And they just kind of made the initiation right over his back. And uh, they really couldn't peel off the pressure. The tomb was dropped to try to separate out. But the mobility from the uh, the Genji and um, from the Li Ming was just too much for them to deal with. You know, it actually works out pretty well with the Nanairosaur because he really likes to uh, be living in the back line. He just walks right into it. He doesn't care. If you're going to spend CC on him to stop him, he's winning that trade initially. And uh, if you're just going to leave him there, then he's going to disrupt them enough, group them up, get them in nice positions where both Li Ming and Genji can kind of start popping off. So we don't really have a much of a dive build with Li Ming. It's really just about shelling the damage out and uh, seeing if Keltha, or seeing if Genji can get in there and finish off the targets. A secret Asian man has basically gotten all the CC spent on him, and that's going to be a kill. No more Johanna, and the counter pressure coming out. A nice hop coming out from Jesus Mafia to avoid that damage or that stun from coming out from Dragon 478, and we are pretty much dead even. Uh, Continuing this fight is probably in favor of Probius as they still have a frontliner. And they're just going to push right up onto this uh, onto this fort. Silence comes out to stop any initiation coming in from Genji. He's now living in the back line. The, the Fen comes out. That root somehow lands and that's actually going to be a kill with the... Uh, with the X-Strike. Thirteen to thirteen on each side, but with the extra kill we do see a slight experience lead. Plus Blaze has just been doing a really good job of kinda keeping up if not pressing the issue with the soak. And now they're just going to initiate. Sage, actually, because of his rotation, is in a terrible position, and that's going to be a pickoff. The fear goes down, but way too late. Massive shove to push Johanna out of the back line, and she's just been causing them all kinds of hell back there. And uh, it looks like they'll get out just barely. Kung Fu, almost dead there. And uh, Leoric... Really kind of taking that I'm immortal stick a little bit too far there. Uh, not when there's a three or four man rotation coming your way, but you're most likely not going to live through that. So Secret Age Man does manage to rotate down here and get that fort, but he's going to stagger another death. And uh, we're just going to have to see if that is actually hashtag worth because I don't know if it is. The experience boost is nice, but if you're just going to feed up a mid late game kill like that, uh, I don't entirely certain that it does a whole lot for you. All of that damage is just so much coming out on top of the Nubrak. He has to actually pull away. Zhukov has great situational healing. Um, he's good at like moment to moment triage. But as far as like a sustained healing or even uh, life saving tools, he just doesn't have a whole lot. And uh, so if he, once that big heal is spent, there's just not a whole lot more that's going to be coming out. And that's the reason why uh, Stukov's kit is designed around getting fast kills. And I'm concerned that we just don't have what we need here in this composition to really pop a target fast enough. 
Especially since the initiation target tends to be the Johannes quite frequently. Um, they're not really diving by it to do anything to the other side. And they're either and they're also not being defensive. Or can't really handle being defensive. But we do see a nice fear brings the Anduin into tower range and he gets picked off. That's a bit of sign of life from Probus. What we needed to see so far. And now to smell is in a big trouble. We see the uh <laughs> we see the entomb going on. He turns around, hits everybody with a four or five man stun. And Genji already noped out. And said, you know what? We're just gonna go steal your, uh, steal your tower. Although you could argue that they can do the same thing on the other side, but uh, it was all delayed. So the orc's gonna come up here, do his best to stall this out. The initiation is gonna come in. They're gonna need to have to put the pressure on quite quickly. And so, despite the cheeky steal, the shot count is definitely going in favor. And though we still have a slight lead for Rectum in this game, it is very close now. 16 to 16 and three quarters. Even in tower shots, almost a four, four shot advantage for the side of Rectum. We do see Leoric getting caught out again. He did not pop his E in time and that's going to get him killed. There's no way he's going to peel himself out in time. He does manage to land the W, but with the... Uh, the contempt coming in he just doesn't manage to heal it up and that's going to be another pickoff and those late game pickoffs can definitely cost them we're going to see a full rotation coming in but blaze is late on the rotation so despite the fact that they get the flank here it might not mean anything we'll see how the initiation goes they have somewhat cornered themselves and blaze is now here we see the massive shove coming out and that is basically going to be the light bomb put right on top all the initiation coming out but here the the tower is about to come up and this is actually going to turn very nasty for the side of uh rectum is now they're going to be starting taking tower shots if that wave gets cleared up quick but another uh mini wave does manage to show up just in time so despite all that it was still a favorable engagement especially since the auric did not maneuver himself into position to defend his team and that's going to be a, a delayed death. And so all of that ground kind of picked back up by Probus. More or less is disintegrated by this late game team fight. So that fort is just going to be reconverted. <clears throat> and Ubrax is going to try to cheekily channel this. Realizes there's no way he's getting away with that. He's going to do his best to delay. He's kind of used all of his forms to CC though. So there's no real forms of delay he has left up here. And his team is not responding in time. So he might as well just back out. Leork doing his best to just try to re-soak up that massive deficit of a level and a half. And in the meantime, we're going to see towers being finally taken by Team Rectum. All the pressure coming out in Nairstar, though. This is a good engagement for them. He's really low, but it is Stukov left on an island with three uh, enemies, Anduin and others, kind of sitting there. He did get a really good massive shove to actually push the Genji away, but unfortunately, it does self-root him to the extent that he's kind of stuck. Where Flailing Swipe, I think, definitely has a bit less punishing mechanics in the sense that you don't have to stand there and just eat damage while you throw it. But Rectum manages to trade out one kill for nothing. They do manage to get the opposing team's camp. They are going to be able to push this in. They do not stop any of those. And then the um, aggressive posturing actually turns into a kill. That's going to be another staggered death for Probus. And this is getting very frightening for them now. They've now lost bottom conversion. They're within 12 shots. Um, and the problem with that can be if they get these two shots here, they're at lethal almost with either through camps to the boss. And it's just a, a very scary situation for Probius to be in. And they don't have 20s. The orc doing his best to try to push up these lanes and soak as much as he possibly can. Uh, it looks like they're going to just sacrifice these objectives. 
characters and put an end. And I, I think that this is just the only call they have left, so it's gonna be ten times the shots available in the Sarnia Team Rectum. Now we've seen comebacks before. They do have the ability to wait for the next objective to come out before they have to initiate anything. 20s are not available. But a huge three-man stun, but that is going to be Genji getting the kill, but he wasn't able to get into the bunker in time. The cocoon did go on to Nanarosaur, and he was so low. Almost a, kind of a misplay. I would say almost getting rid of that uh, blaze would have been the better choice, but we did get a one-for-one -one trade, so it's not the end of the world. And as we see here... Leoric is doing his absolute damnedest to just push in all of these lanes. He has level 20. He did push this up. This is probably going to convert, actually. I don't think the rotation is going to come up in time. Um, but really, the thing here is that... Uh, Rectum doesn't really care. They only need two shots. So right now, it's evened out at four. Even if they get this top conversion, they just need to push in the spot camp. And things are terrible. And this boss call could end up costing them the game. As that's now going to be six shots walking through this bot lane while an objective spawns. I mean, this is just going to be the ultimate splitting. You're basically going to need to send Leoric into this back area. While your foreman clears this lane. And Leoric has to basically int. Well, the wave clears here. The initiation's coming in. And oh no, the fear actually turns into two kills. No, just one, two kills now. Actually, it was two kills onto Anubrak and to Cassia. All the resets coming in and just destroying the hopes and dreams of Team Probius. That is going to be game number three in favor of Team Rectum. That late game team fight just turned on their heads. The reset comp doing what it's designed to do and getting those resets and ending the game. So there are our end of game stats. You can see Gul'dan was definitely dishing out the damage and Leoric was definitely soaking and, and doing all the things that he could there. But uh, when it came down to it, the kills were just heavily in favor of this super aggressive reset composition. And uh, it ended up winning the day. They might have been losing in the macro department in several cases, but when it came down to it, as long as you're killing the other team consistently and getting the shots that you need to convert, in the end, you're going to win the game. Pop up the talent screen so everyone can see. And then I will bug somebody for a quick interview before I have to sign off for the night. Okay, let me get this all set up. So it's going to be team... Now see what we've got here. There we go. Let me see if I can find somebody for an interview. Okay, well, it looks like uh, they've gone offline or done for the night, so it doesn't look like we're going to get the interview I was hoping for. Um, so, that's all good. 
it's okay. You're not required to do it by any means. So if you got other things to do, it's perfectly fine. I probably should get jetting myself. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it was a fantastic matchup. I'm pretty happy with the uh, the way it all kind of turned out. Um, very close matchup between those two teams. It was definitely not one-sided by any means. Um, before I go, let me just uh, say thanks for everybody that showed up to watch the match. I know this is kind of last minute. I just kind of threw it together, and I was super amateur today, but I apologize. I hopefully can get my shit together for the next upcoming matches. Um, please follow if you haven't followed. That always helps me out. Uh, if you want to...